Ready to get your buzz on? Sports Buzz is here to take all calls and answer all questions about your favorite team, coach, or player, local, regional, and national. Sports Buzz, taking calls and kicking game. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday Sports Buzz presented by livingforless.org. We are back live tonight, 11 to 12. We uh, it took a couple weeks off, and we're happy to be back uh, taking your phone calls, 964-2121, the Oxmoor Ford Lincoln Buzz Line. This is Louisville's only live TV sports talk show, and we want to hear from you tonight. I'm your host, Greg Brom, and joining me back uh, for a return engagement on our couch is the queen of the Sunday Sports Buzz. Kristen Tholburn from Clear Channel Radio with us again tonight. Hi, Kristen. Hi. It's great to the have queen. you here. The, the well, yeah, it, well, it, it, you know, I don't want to damper this, but Handsome Jimmy's your king. Okay, <laughs> Handsome's your king, you're, and you're the queen of the sports buzz. I, ca I could do worse. I'll show him some respect. <laughs> oh, no, show him some respect. <laughs> show him some respect. We'll probably hear from him, him tonight. We want to hear from you. A lot of topics tonight. Uh, uh, we're going to start off with the NBA Finals, a, really a great finish to the series at least. Game six and seven as the Miami Heat win their second NBA championship in a row. And LeBron James, the weight of the world on his shoulders, Kristen. And uh, he came through in game seven. His team pulls off the, the, the victory uh, and a second championship for, for LeBron. How important to the LeBron James Mystique, the legend, was this victory. Oh, it's incredibly important because, you know, especially after the decision where he's promising not one, not two, not three, you, you've got you to gotta show up and win a couple championships before, that, before people stop talking about that. And he's done that. To me, I'm a Steelers fan, and to me he's been Roethlisberger. He doesn't... He doesn't play well every play. He doesn't always show up at the beginning of the game, but in the clutch, at the end of the game, he's always there. He comes through. He does does something. Always? That, well, not because always. Not either. always. But I, I actually think LeBron has become more and more likable. Uh, and I think a main reason is, is he, he's kind of shown that he's human. I think we've watched him overcome that battle within he has sometimes at clutch time, how he failed, how he was a little bit scared against Dallas a couple of years ago to, to take over. And you even saw him struggle in game six. He made two turnovers down the stretch. If they don't win that game, and they miraculously did win the game, we would have been talking about the turnovers he made. Game seven, though, he gets clutch shot. I don't know if he all, it almost makes him more likable to me. He doesn't always do it. He, he doesn't have that killer in him. And you know what? He, he almost is like, you can see it in his face, gosh, do I have to carry this team again? I don't know if I want to do it. Someone, someone else do it for, for, take a little bit off my shoulders. But in the end, he has to do it. For that team to win, he had to score, to me, the first three games, he scored under 20 points. Yeah. He had all these assists, all these rebounds, great stats, triple-double stats, doesn't mean anything. To me, LeBron has to score 20, 25 points. And do all that other stuff. He absolutely does, and it's because he has the ability to score that every single game. You know, he's going to get his if he goes after it. And I think early in the series, he didn't have as much of a killer instinct. And I think you make a great point about game six when, you know, down the stretch it looked like he was struggling. And if, if they don't come through, we're talking about how LeBron James lost the series. Oh, yeah, and the That's, big three is a complete disaster. The last three minutes of that game... <laughs> is the difference between LeBron is the greatest and LeBron lost that series. Well, let me ask you about the series. And Game 6, I think, will always stand out. When you think of the series, you're going to think of that finish in Game 6. It was a great game throughout, really dramatic. Miraculously, the, either the Spurs gave it to the Heat or the Heat were able to take it at the end, tie it up on the Ray Allen 3, go to overtime. LeBron did take over in the fourth quarter. Had terrible three quarters. Took over in the fourth, had his two turnovers, but just, just lowered his head and went to the basket. Great series, and then they followed it up with a good game seven. Great series are just two good games to finish. Two great games to finish, or was it a great series? I think two great games to finish. And game six was probably one of the best playoff games that I've ever seen. I, I'd call it top ten of, of what I've seen. Yeah. And Historically good, I think. You always as, remember it. Yeah, I agree. I think it was 
I'm, I'm not a Heat fan. I'm not a Spurs fan. But I was hanging on every second of that game, and that's, that's the mark of a really great game to me. But games two and three, it was 30-point, almost, well, almost 30-point blowouts one way, and then the other, and the first three games of that series to me just were not, were not great at all. And I've seen better series in my lifetime, and I'm probably younger than, than a lot of our viewers. And even, even the Lakers versus the Celtics several years ago, to me, that was a better series than what we just saw. So I absolutely cannot call it the greatest series of all time. I, I, I'm hesitant to call it that, too. It was two great games to finish. It was back and forth. It was evenly matched. Great contrast in personalities, I think, on both sides. I go back to the, when I was in grade school, the cell, Bird Magic in 84. I mean, I think that was the first great series that, that, that elevated the NBA was Bird Magic going to seven games. I don't know if this was better than that. I don't think it was as a series. But Game st- 6, historically good. Um, you had, you had a lot of things that went on. Popovich, some of his decisions were just, I couldn't, didn't know what he was doing. Duncan not in the game. Ginobili, he is their Russ Smith. Ginobili mm-hmm. is the yep. Spurs' Russ Smith. He, he, he'll do great things, and then he'll boggle your mind with what is he doing out there. But a lot of instances where you're going to be talking about it, like what happened to certain people out there. I, I thought it was really interesting. It brings up a point. I want Kristen, we, I had her do a list for us. LeBron. Two titles. He's trying to, to elevate his position in the NBA lore and, and historically. Top 10 in NBA, NBA players of all time. If you throw up the graphic, this was Kristen's list and where LeBron fit in, fits in. She has Magic or Michael. Kobe, too. I was a little surprised by that. Russell Magic. LeBron sl- slotting in at five ahead of Kareem, Bird, Shaquille, Wilt, and, and Jerry West. First of all, Kobe at two. That's a, that's a little high. I would think that most people would have Kobe that high. And, and three ahead of LeBron. I think Kobe Bryant is Michael Jordan light. And I, I'm really impressed with him as a player. He's, I know he's, he's not done yet, but he, he carries a team. And the Lakers have been Kobe Bryant like the Bulls were Michael Jordan. And I feel like that's so rare in the NBA for a team to be a singular player so completely. I tell you what, I, I think that I'd put probably Kobe down a little bit, Russell two, Magic three. I'm moving Kareem up on your list. I'm probably moving Wilt up even on the list. LeBron is right at the bird Kobe level. I think those three are like, if you really think about it, Shaq won three in a row. We never were talking about him as the greatest of all time. I think LeBron, it is a little premature to compare him to Jordan. Jordan. The landscape of get how dominant he was. We'll talk about it more. We want to hear from you. What do you think of Kristen's list? Where does LeBron fit in? What did you think of this series? 964-2121. This is the Sunday Sports Buzz presented by livingforless.org. Sports Buzz will return after these messages from our sponsors. The landscape of sports radio has changed in a big way. 1450 The Sports Buzz has you covered with the best and most local and national programming in the Kentuckiana area. Mason and Myers in the morning, The Dan Patrick Show, The Afternoon Drive with Perrin Johnson and Trevor Kelsey, and Inside the Press Box with Nick Coffey, as well as the best high school coverage in the area. Get the best coverage in Kentucky and Southern Indiana with 1450 The Sports Buzz and 1450thesportsbuzz.com. Little Bo Peep wanted a car for keeps. She looked all around and got turned down. Then she met the fine folks here at Jim Brown Auto Sales. Don't let the wool be pulled over your eyes. Come see my daddy's flock of cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs with down payments as low as $99. Visit us today on the web at www.jimbrownautosales.com. Who's your daddy? Quien es su papa? Cha cha. Perhaps the greatest TV special ever offered. You get five great gifts for all occasions. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. I could fly by a man Her breathtaking voice has captured hearts around the world. You are the wind beneath my wings. Every song you've always wanted, they have never sounded so beautiful. 
Call now for this new special by Christy Lane. You get over 70 classics on three CDs plus Christy's number one million selling biography for only $19.99. Plus shipping, you save over 50%, less than $5 each. Call now and as a special bonus you get the collector's item, Christy's first live concert and show on DVD absolutely free. You pay shipping only. Call 1-800-845-7552. Five beautiful gifts that keep on giving for someone you love. All right. A great uh, gift for the summer, something to buy yourself. Buy yourself, your buddies, the 2013 Bluegrass Golf Card. <laughs> now, this, this price is almost getting ridiculous. $75. A $535 retail value. We dropped that price $24 in the last couple of weeks. $75. You get six courses. or six courses. Maywood, Rosewood, the Falls, Stonecrest, K Valley, and Indian Springs. $75. Uh, a $530. That's a pretty good discount, right? That's, That's a, a sale. That's a real good discount. That's a sale. Isn't it? You, you'd be all over that. Look, Chris, I've, been dying, I've been dying to store. learn to play golf because I never learned. I, I may I, have to learn <laughs> to play golf. You, 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 you'll never get a better opportunity than the Bluegrass Golf Card. Please give us a call, 964-2121 or shop21live.com. We've been talking about the NBA Finals, the Miami Heat win their second uh, consecutive title. We've kind of slotted LeBron in. Kristen had, had him at number five. I'd probably, when I kind of rearranged yours, I'd have him around five, six, uh, right in that range as well. Uh, I still think he has worked it. He's not Jordan. I think we forget how dominant Jordan really was. And I think LeBron has his moments. I enjoy watching his struggle a little bit. LeBron and, has so much raw talent yeah. that he's not done with what he's going to do. And I'm kind of giving him the benefit of the doubt that is that his career is going to be as long and productive as Kobe or as Jordan. So I'm, I'm giving him a little bit of the benefit of a doubt, but his raw talent has always been there. And I feel like since he's moved to the Heat, after that first year, he realized, okay, maybe raw talent isn't enough. Maybe I really got to work. And since he started really working, it's, there's been a difference. And I just, he's one, of those, he's one of those guys that's hard to compare people to. And there's only a handful of them. And most of them are on that list. Shaquille O'Neal. Who do you compare to Shaquille O'Neal? Who do, you, who do you match up against him? Who do you match up against LeBron James? Who do you match up against Michael? You, I mean, you have to pick someone, but no one's... No one, there's not uh, no a good one, answer. No one not a good is like to that those, question. those guys in many ways. And LeBron even, while jump shooting was his weakness, and, and Popovich till... I mean, he was going to give him that outside shot. He finally hit it in Game 7. He mm -hmm. started hitting the shot. Now, if I was Pop, I would have then maybe... Tried to put con contested it a little bit. Just kept giving him the. After he felt good, he had the rhythm going. He still gave. But Pop you know once you contest it, he's going did, inside. Pop, I love Pop, but he did some weird things. What do you think about his being a reporter? The Doris Burke Popovich, back and forth. I don't know if you paid attention to the interviews and Pop's. He's almost pulling the Belichick. Never gives an answer to a question. I love Doris. I think Doris Burke is one of the best announcers, male or female, and. Pop, the way he answers a question, I just, come on, the shtick was too much. Occasionally give an answer. You don't always have to say, nope, nope, you know, I'm going to tell you that, whatever. As a reporter, and specifically as a female reporter, I love Doris Burke, and I think that she absolutely knows so much about sports, and I love seeing a female out there that is so knowledgeable and that gets it and you know, she knows her stats. She knows the game. Oh, she's she's, great. she's fantastic. In my opinion, she's as a reporter. It drives me crazy when people <laughs> don't give me an answer, and I have to ask the same question five times, and I still don't get an answer. You know, I get I get the media training that these guys go through, and at the second that they go off script, they usually say something really dumb that ESPN blows into a huge deal for about five weeks. But come, just answer the question. <laughs> Is it that hard? It's I not mean, that hard. That's what you're getting paid for. The media, that's why they're paid, your salary is so big, is all these eyeballs that are watching the game.
please answer the question every now and then. I know you got to put on the performance. You can say something other than, you know, all my teammates, they're just, they're just. Oh, I mean, you know, yeah. Your but teammates Pop, are great. We know. How to Pop, Pop was, it was a little too much, maybe. But uh, let's go to Joe, who's up. We got a full, we got a bunch of callers. Kristen, you're here tonight, and the phones are lighting up. Joe, you're first up. Okay. Joe, you're up. I'm a big Celtics fan, and I wanted to know if the Celts and the Clippers are going to make another deal. Well, Doc Rivers going to uh, the Clippers, probably Garnett to follow Kristen. What, what do you think this does? I mean, for the Clippers. You th what do you what, what do you think they could, are they could, they're I mean, are they going to the finals next year? I don't know that they're going. To, in fact, I think the Heat's going to the finals again next year, unless unless something just drastically changes. The Clip I mean, the Clippers are a good team, and I think Garnett specifically would be a great add. But I I don't, I don't know. It's just I've got to see them play together because so much of it in the NBA is about personalities and the way things gel and I mean we've seen a lot of that with coaches and players not getting along or other players not getting along in the locker room and that causing a team with a yeah. lot of talent to really not be as good I have to see the Clippers for be. one year together before I say they're going to the finals next I year agree. I don't I think the Heat are not I think really? I think they barely hung on to this one I, they got to read they're gonna stick with Bosch and the whole big three probably one year too long because I don't think they're going back I think the Bulls and I'm going to say Oklahoma City. I think Durant does get back there, and it's going to be Chicago when Rose gets back. I love, I love the Bulls. I think Chicago and, and, and OKC going back to the finals. Let's go to Troy. You're out. Hey, Greg. Hey, Troy. How you doing tonight? Doing great, Long man. Long time, buddy. Good to hear from uh, you. I really like your uh, top ten list, man. That's a heck of a list there. It's uh, such a good list that... Julius Irving's not on it. You know, Dr. J, who are you going to take off that list for Dr. J? Uh, hey, you know what? I thought about that. I, it, it, it's kind of funny. Guys that, that you thought would always be on that list, they're starting to get pushed down by the LeBrons and the Kobe's. Duncan's not on the list. Is Duncan. Right. I mean, did he put re, Kristen? And this was Kristen's wrist, uh, list there, Troy. And, and, and I, I agree with almost everything she said on it, but Duncan... He, he went back to the finals five times. He's, he might not be done yet, but what do you think about him? He was actually one that I really thought about putting on the list. And honestly, Jerry West down there at number 10 is kind of a, he's the logo. Yeah. I feel like he's got to be there. But as far as talent, Duncan absolutely is, is in that conversation for top 10. Any top 10 list you're going you're gonna to make, there's 10 more guys that you feel like should be on it. And Tim Duncan is absolutely in the in the conversation he's, for that, and he was right one on that when I was going through it, I I thought seriously, I was like, well, Duncan, well, I don't know. He's not. It's just if he'd have won this one, I think maybe he's on there. And I he think he doesn't get quite the press that some of the other that the LeBron and the Kobe does. If if he had won this one, I think he. Five, it's I hard to argue with five. I think yeah. he would. I think he he burst on there with, and LeBron goes down yes, <laughs> quite yes, a bit. Absolutely. With, uh, game LeBron, six turns LeBron's out different. At, Duncan and LeBron are flip flopping spots. Yeah, LeBron's probably at nine. Yeah, definitely. Okay, let's go right before we go to break. Dave, let's get you in on. Dave, you're up. Hey, what's going on, Greg? How you doing? Good. Listen, uh, two things. One is is uh, you know game six and game seven. You know they finally let them play and. Uh, you notice LeBron was talking to the officials every time they go to a commercial and complain about the fouling. But you didn't see none of the San Antonio players do it. Uh, in fact, you saw Parker get, uh, kind of stepping in and tell LeBron, quit crying after, yeah. uh, during one sequence there. And granted, and next thing is, is you're comparing newer generation players against older generation players, whereas they play as a team and pass the ball, whereas... You have one or two players that you rely on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand what yeah. you're saying. You're talking, you know, in the past they did they did have more of a, a team dynamic than they probably do now in the era of superstars. And that's why it's so hard to to compare apples to oranges almost because, you know, comparing the 1970s NBA to the 2013 NBA is almost apples and oranges. It's like comparing college basketball to the NBA. And that doesn't mean that some of the, those players weren't great or that the current players aren't great. It's just it's so hard to compare it because the game has changed so drastically. 
Yeah, it is hard to play. I just don't, I think Michael's on, he's above. LeBron's not up near Michael. Michael is now, the consensus. My, I go Michael, game. Russell, and Magic. You had Kobe up there. I go right, Russell with the championships and Magic with his championships. He was dynamic. He was in this era, really. Right, 11 uh, championships. Enough said. Uh, enough said on Russell. Crazy. He's, he's clearly top five. All right, let's go to break. We're going to come back, talk about Kentucky is America's team. And Rick Patino made some comments this week about a decision he made. He said it was the best decision he ever made to leave UK. We're going to talk about that. Sunday Sports Bus presented by LivingForLess.org. Sports Buzz will return after these messages from our sponsors. Hi, I'm Jim Weeks, and Max Care No Project is too big. We have the capabilities to handle the smallest residential project to the largest commercial undertaking. We even clean big houses like this one. And everyone has been a buzz about our amazing four areas for $99 special. We want to let everyone know that MaxCare also cleans upholstery, ceramic tile, and air ducts. We also install and refinish hardwood floors dust free. MaxCare, locally owned and family operated. Give us a call, 636 4629. In a matter of seconds, a car accident can turn your world upside down. You've been seriously hurt. You can't work, and medical bills are pouring in. Call Aguiar Injury Lawyers right now. You can talk to a lawyer for free. Find out if you're entitled to money for your injuries. If you've been hurt in a car accident, get the money you need, the money you deserve. Call Aguiar Injury Lawyers, 888-8888. Attention sleep apnea patients. You could qualify to have your supplies regularly delivered right to your door at little or no cost to you. That's right, no more inconvenience, no worn out masks and straps, no more unsanitary equipment, just restful sleep. Don't delay, call us now to see if you are eligible to save money on regular delivery of your CPAP and BiPAP supplies. Call 1-800-667-1850. That's 1-800-667-1850. Or go to CPAPSupplyHelpline.com. Keep your eye on 21 for the latest news and weather information from the local team that is working for you. Weekdays at 1 p.m., you can see Wave 3 News Midday on Channel 21. Get the breaking news happening right now in our community and around the world. Plus, the most accurate forecast from Kentuckiana's favorite weather team. Catch the day's news and weather at a time that's right for you. Wave 3 News Midday, weekdays at 1 p.m. One more reason to keep your eye on 21. We hope you love the Sunday Sports Buzz, and if you love it, tune in to 1450 throughout the week. I joined Mason and Myers in the morning a couple of times a week, chatted up with Jeff Mason and Rashawn Myers. I uh, love to spar with Mace, and I love to agree with everything Rashawn says. And brought to you by InsurMax, Chad and Alan Hennessy, 479-4085. For all your home life and auto needs, Chad or Alan, they will take care of you. We thank them for uh, supporting these segments. Thank you for watching. Greg Brown along with the queen of the Sunday sports buzz. Yes, she is. Royalty, Kristen Thoburn from Clear Channel Radio. Uh, you probably hear her in the mornings do a news anchor mm -hmm. on Tony Cruz's morning show on uh, 84 WHAS. And she, she's just a woman of many talents. And she's going to talk about some of that a little bit later on, some of the other things she has going on. Before we get back to the phone lines and our number 964-2121, Craig Victor, a recruit out of New Orleans, uh, kind of made a statement about Kentucky this week. He called Kentucky basketball America's team. I think, you know, America's team. We think of the Dallas Cowboys we think of when we think of the, the who first were coined America's team. Kristen, first of all, is Kentucky America's team? I, I don't tend to think so. I, I think that a lot of people really love them, but I also think a lot of people really hate them. And if we're talking about America's team as far as college basketball, I, it's really hard for me to pick one. I, because you know, what? There's, you know, there's almost a Cinderella every year in the NCAA yeah. tournament that becomes America's team. But Kentucky's such, I don't such think, a powerhouse. I tell you what, they are, but I don't... America's team, I think you can both, it's, to me it's a team like the Cowboys where you either love them or you hate them. You can hate America's team, I think. That, that doesn't disqualify you from being it, but I don't know if Kentucky has the mass appeal outside of this state. 
well, that even people liking them. Who likes them outside of this state? That's what I, I agree. And I'm actually from New Orleans. <laughs> and I feel like a lot of people, you know, he this kid is from New Orleans like I am. Yeah. And I don't know where he gets that because I just, I don't think anyone in Louisiana cares about Kentucky basketball. They don't even go to LSU basketball. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if I had to pick, I'm going to go through some sports. College basketball, Duke's America's team. To me, Duke is America's team. Really? Oh, they I have that broad so. appeal, and they have enough people that hate them. To me, if they have it, America's it, coach, I, I'd consider Duke America's team in college basketball. You got anybody else? I think North Carolina is more America's okay. team than Duke or Kentucky is. And they're kind of harmless, if that makes sense. Yeah. Here in Kentucky, a lot of people really don't like them, and there's a lot of strong feelings. But nationwide, North Carolina is very harmless. They've got that baby blue uniform their hats are are cool they're popular they all they have been for years and not even be not even they're not offensive, are, are fans. usually yeah, they're, right. offensive they're, they're very uh, there's a lot of all-american guys there it's it's not it's very clean cut relatively. It's very, they're generally easy to like unless you have a reason to dislike them. college football i'd say notre dame is america's team yes i just you know broad appeal nba to me, it's the Lakers. To me, it's the Bulls. The Bulls, okay. I think it's the Bulls. I think Jordan, a little residual from the Jordan era. Absolutely. And I think that's, it's still a team that they were so good for so long. And my, Michael Jordan is still the, almost the face of the Bulls, even, even in 2013. Oh. Even after Washington, even with Joe Kim Noah, it's, it's Jordan. It's been 15 years since he won his last. I, I mean, the it's amazing. The jersey is still iconic. It, it absolutely his staying power as a as a he hovers over the NBA still. Speaking of that, the Bulls and, and, and that era that you call them America's team because of it in the NFL. I don't think the Cowboys are, and I've always been a Cowboys fan. I think the Steelers are America's team. Now I, I thought that too, but I'm a Steelers fan, so I know how incredibly biased I am. <laughs> I, I tend to think so. And I think it's from the, the, the 70s Super Bowls. I mean, it's just from there, it took off. It's kind of like, I think the Packers had that from the 60s. But I think the Steelers probably are America's team. One of the, one of the interesting things about that is that during, especially the 80s and the 90s, when we didn't have, as cable TV wasn't as expanded, not every game was on TV, we didn't have the red zone, the teams that got so much play were the Steelers and the Cowboys. And so a lot of people outside of the states of Texas, outside of the state of Pennsylvania, really got attached to these teams because they were able to watch them every week. And so I think while the Cowboys were initially America's team, the Steelers have had, have had recent dominance that's allowed yeah. that fan base to continue. I mean, those are the two fan bases that people talk about always See, cattle. I think the Cowboys kind of, kind of uh, made them called themselves America's team. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't like people were calling. I think Cowboys said, we are America's team. And, the and moniker the was self-imposed. Then they got the cheerleaders and everyone <laughs> and, and, agreed. Yes, you are. You are America's <laughs> team. Um, all right, and baseball, I'd say the Yankees. It's got to be. It's the Yankees. Think, it is. I think it's transcendent, the, the Yankee dominance over, over the years. Okay, let's go to the call. Phone lines, Phoenix Hill Richard back up here on Sunday Sports Buzz. Hey, Phoenix Hill. Hey, Greg and Christian. Great show as always. Thank you, man. Yeah, I just wanted to refer back to the uh, thing about the NBA list. You know, I, yeah, I agree with that caller earlier, Dr. J. I mean, I just think he was he was amazing. I mean, I'd, I'd put Dr. J on the list. It, well, West at the bottom might be a, a, a casualty of, of you know, it might be his era was so long ago. He was. Even though he was great, my dad would tell, a lot of people would say that Jerry West was an amazing player, won championships. And I think, I think that he's definitely in the conversation. Jerry West was just one of those, he is the logo. I mean, <laughs> he is. He and it's a little bit of, a little bit of local NBA. bias. It's, he, he was a great player. Yeah. Was he top 10 as far as raw talent? Probably not. Well, Dr. J was spectacular. Dr. But Dr. Did J he was... produce enough, you know, as far as championships, things like that? To, but he, he's right there. I think Duncan. he's in the conversation. But those last three Duncan. slots. Oscar Robertson, another one. That usually gets mentioned as well. Okay, we're going to go to break, come back, talk to Todd. We're also talking, taking more calls, 964-2121. When we come back, we're going to talk about Rick Pitino, uh, a decision he made long ago, and we'll talk about some recent decisions he's made, too, here at the Sunday Sports Buzz, presented by livingforless.org. 
Sports Buzz will return after these messages from our sponsors. Calling all chicken lovers, it's the new Chicken Strips Box, only at Rally's. Two big pieces of white meat chicken, crispy outside, juicy inside, paired with our famous fries. For taste that rocks, grab a $2 box. Rally's, feast on. Smart shoppers, cause this is how you roll. You love your car, it's your best friend, there's one thing that you know. Before you drive around and in the city or town, you want to show her up, you know. Yeah, this is how you roll. That's what we're all about. Smart shoppers, because this is how you roll. Are you behind on your mortgage payments? Could your house go into foreclosure? American Foreclosure Service can help save your home. We specialize in foreclosure assistance, and that's all we do. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, being threatened with foreclosure, have been denied a loan modification, or been the victim of a predatory loan, it's critical that you call American Foreclosure Service now. New laws are in effect that may save your home. So call American Foreclosure Service now. The drive through you love has the frozen treats you crave. Rally's Waffle Cones, just a buck 49. Rich, creamy, soft serve in vanilla, swirl, or chocolate. At a buck 49, waffle you waiting for. Rally's Freeze All Day. You know, uh, local product Justin Thomas from St. X High, St High School did really well in the pro golf tournament this weekend. He's a, a sophomore at University of, University of Alabama, and he was on the leaderboard league coming into today. Uh, but uh, uh, so with that, if you want to be the next Justin Thomas, $75. The 2013 Bluegrass Golf Card, $535 value. You get those six courses, great courses. You probably played them before. Uh, some of them maybe not. All around the area, definitely $75. Uh, it's unbelievable. It's less than $15 or a round of golf at these great courses. Get two of them, you and your buddy. Get four of them, four of them, go on out, play. We're here with Kristen Thoburn. Uh, we're talking, we talked a little America's team. Uh, Kentucky, we both agree, is not <laughs> America's team. I can't believe that, I think that, Louisville right? might be more, after last year's basketball season, it tugged at the heartstrings a little bit of America. Kevin Ware, and they're a little bit more lovable, I well, think. I would agree for this year only. Yeah, I, this like year I only. said, America generally throughout through the tournament, you know, Butler, if we want to look oh, at the past yeah, five years, has, has kind of been America's team a little bit. Every, how do you root against Butler? But Louisville was, Louisville was this year. The you know, there was door. VCU with Shaka Smart. There's always that, that team in the NCAA tournament. But I think if we're looking overall, a broad arching over the past 50 years, I think North Carolina is. I don't think Louisville I think it's is. Duke. I think it's Duke. I think uh, Duke has, has uh, towered over college basketball maybe for the last 25 years in, in a way that they're probably America's team. Okay, Rick Pitino, early this week, was quoted giving a speech that the best decision he ever made was leaving Kentucky. Now, he did couch that to say because he failed in Boston. He learned humility. I think maybe, you know, in the past he said it's the worst decision he ever made leaving Kentucky, which for his career he'd have been with Coach K right now in wins and titles and all that if he'd have stayed at Kentucky. Yeah. He probably maybe would have rather said the best thing that ever happened to me was leaving Kentucky because I learned these values. But it got me thinking. I know Kentucky fans got all up in arms. Tino said it was the best decision he ever made without – really hearing the context of it. Got me thinking of the good decisions Rick Pitino has made. So Kristen and I talked before the show. I, Kristen made a list. The top five decisions Rick Pitino has made since he's been the coach at Louisville. What are they? And here are Kristen's top five. Taking the job in the first place, which he had to turn Michigan down. He was taking the Michigan job. Took Tom Jurch's offer to be the Louisville coach. Hiring his son not taking the Sacramento Kings job, sticking to his game plan and his recruiting style through all the criticism, and moving Russ Smith to shooting guard. Kristen, talk about your list. I love that list. Well, I mean, you, you'd make a good point about taking the job. Who thought, who thought Rick Pitino would ever take this that job? That was a risk. That was a because huge of the risk. Kentucky history he had. That was a huge risk. And he made it, and it was, the, it was undeniably the right decision. This is where he's going to end his career. And 
I mean, I just I think that was a fantastic decision and probably not an easy one to make. Hiring Richard Patino, that's something that can really come off as nepotism. And if it fails, you're on the hook for it, big time, especially with the media. I'm in the media. If that doesn't work out, yeah. we're going to jump all over it. And he made the right decision because Richard Patino is clearly a fantastic coach. In, in my and, opinion, he'll be the next coach at Louisville because Rick will be here till he's 70 and Richard will be successful. For I think years. Louisville could do a lot worse than Richard Patino. That's I think I, he's, a he's a fantastic recruiter. He's his game planning is fantastic. What he did with FIU in one year yeah. is and phenomenal. I, I, think you make, and I think you make a good point. I'm going to couch it a little, you know, frame it a little differently. Sticking to his game plan, I think he was flexible in that he, he was willing to shift when Cal came to town a little bit. He had to recalibrate. Okay, we're not going to get those the top recruits in the country. We're taking that next level, and we're going to develop them into NBA caliber athletes and fit them into a system. Louisville first, cards forever. Whoever came up with that, it has stuck. Yeah. It has stuck. Louisville first. I think he was flexible enough to go back to what he did at Kentucky, pressing. Well, and I mean, he, d he was flexible, and you have to be flexible in this game that's constantly changing. As the rules change, you're going to make some, some variations. But there was a, he was getting a lot of criticism two and three years ago. He's never going to win another title. Oh, yeah. The game has He's passed done. him by. And he had a lot of injuries, and he stuck to that hard-pressing style, the tough practices, recruiting four-year guys, and it worked. Well, I'll tell you what. Now I think Louisville has an identity with that press. People are scared of Louisville. That press has an aura about it mm -hmm. that, that they know they're going to get just swallowed up by it. I think next year you're even going to see more three-point shooting. It's going to look like 96 Kentucky or even before that the Farmer Kentucky, you know, the team yeah. before that that shot threes all the time with all these guards he's going to have this year. I think another great decision was the white suit. <laughs> I, I think it, it added to his image. I mean, the white suit that he has worn has become a staple for him. Great decision. And here's one, I don't want to bring up a skeleton, but I think it might have saved his job, is when the Cypher situation came about, he got out in front of it, he brought the charges on her before she could bring the allegation. I, I don't, he, how he handled that allowed him to keep his job. And I think, I think that was a huge, good decision by him. You make a really good point, and I think that he made a bad decision, and he knew he made a bad decision and decided that making one bad decision did not need to lead to a string of bad decisions. And while he made a bad decision, he made some really good decisions in, in the years after that. Once, once he realized what the situation was, once she, she started you know, extorting yeah. him, I, I think he made a mistake. He owned up to it. He let some embarrassing details out in order to do the right thing. I think. And he moved on, I think, as a, as a kind of a changed man in many ways. I think he's a little bit mellower in his demeanor. I, I think he's, he's on fire right now. That guy's got it going on. Let's go to Todd real quick before we go to break. Todd, you're up. Hey, Greg. First time caller. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for calling. Uh, first of all, I want to give a big shout out to Flash A. Her dad's all right. Over there. My, yeah, That's absolutely. Right. Uh, hey, I love uh, Louisville basketball. They've always been there, and they always will be, so that's not a concern of mine. I, I, I'm just so giddy over the football team, though. And, yeah. You know, I can – just a quick comment and then a question. But um, I can remember going out to those old Cardinal Stadium football games as far back as the late 70s. And, you know, we've got a lot more tradition than what people realize. We just didn't have all the facilities and things like that. But we've put a lot of people in the pros over the years. And, of course, you playing for Snell and Berger and – and your brothers, but anyways, my question is, um, I, I, you know, if Teddy has the year that we all think that he will have, does he go down, and in my opinion, and I've seen a lot of local football, I think mm -hmm. he might be the best local football player of all time. And then just a real quick second question, I really, maybe I'm just a homer, but I really believe he's going to be a solid NFL quarterback for years, and I'll yeah. hang up and listen. Okay, you know what? We're going to answer those, Todd, when we come back. But we got to get a commercial break about Teddy Bridgewater, Todd's question about will he go down as the greatest player in Louisville history. Good question. We'll do that with Kristen Thoburn on the other side of this commercial break. The Sunday Sports Bus presented by livingforless.org. Sports Buzz will return after these messages from our sponsors. 
Little Bo Peep wanted a car for keeps. She looked all around and got turned down. Then she met the fine folks here at Jim Brown Auto Sales. Don't let the wool be pulled over your eyes. Come see my daddy's flock of cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs with down payments as low as $99. Visit us today on the web at www.jimbrownautosales.com. Who's your daddy? Quien es su papa? Cha cha. The landscape of sports radio has changed in a big way. 1450 The Sports Buzz has you covered with the best and most local and national programming in the Kentuckiana area. Mason and Myers in the morning, the Dan Patrick Show, the afternoon drive with Perrin Johnson and Trevor Kelsey, and inside the press box with Nick Coffey, as well as the best high school coverage in the area. Get the best coverage in Kentucky and Southern Indiana with 1450 The Sports Buzz and 1450thesportsbuzz.com. Like I'm drowning in credit card debt. And it's jeopardizing my marriage. I can't concentrate at work. My boss is noticing. I don't know what my options are. The Friends and Family Financial Network is a group of nonprofit agencies whose programs can help you lower your interest rates by up to 60%, reduce your credit card payments by up to 30%, and much more. Finally, I'm on the road to financial wellness, and I couldn't have done it without help. Our dream of living a debt-free life is now reality. Keep your eye on 21 for the latest news and weather information from the local team that is working for you. Weekdays at 1 p.m., you can see Wave 3 News Midday on Channel 21. Get the breaking news happening right now in our community and around the world. Plus, the most accurate forecast from Kentuckiana's favorite weather team. Catch the day's news and weather at a time that's right for you. Wave 3 News Midday, weekdays at 1 p.m. One more reason to keep your eye on 21. There's our great lineup throughout the week on 1450, the Sports Buzz. Uh, Mason and Myers holding Ford in the morning. Jim Rome now on 1450, the Sports Buzz from 12 to 3. He's the lead in for Trevor Kelsey, though. Jim Rome is the oh lead in for Trevor and Perrin uh, in the afternoons. Nick Coffey, Larry Glover live, Dan Patrick, great national and local lineup on 1450 The Sports Buzz. Make sure you tune in. Thank you for tuning in every Sunday night right here. We're going on three years doing this show. Louisville's only live TV sports talk show taking calls. Greg Brown along with Kristen Tholburn. Kristen, we're going to get into football. We had a football question from Todd before the break. But you've got a football event this week. It's pretty big. I think this will end up being a real big deal in this state. They kind of started it up a few years ago. And I think it's it's kind of uh, making a getting a good footprint on the local sports scene. It's the Kentucky Pro Football Hall of Fame. Tell us about it. Yeah, myself and Angie Fenton will be at the red carpet of the Kentucky Pro Football Hall of Fame induction ceremony at the Palace on Friday. You can still get tickets. You can get those at kyprofootballhof.com. Tickets start at just twenty-five dollars, and for twenty-five dollars, you can see both Harbaugh brothers which will be at the Kentucky Pro Football Hall oh, of Fame. Super Bowl coach. The whole the whole Harbaugh family will actually be getting the Collier Award. So, yeah, both Super Bowl coaches will be here in Louisville on Friday at the Kentucky Football Hall of Fame induction ceremony. I tell you what, in the past I. years you always get some legends that show up. I don't know if Howard Schnellenberger is going to show up this year or not, but he's been there before. Horning, I mean, you get everybody who's played substantial football in the state of Kentucky. In the state of Kentucky usually is at this event. Uh, I know Frank Minifield was uh, uh, you know, he was important to get this thing going, and a uh, great event. Kristen and Angie Fenton on the red carpet uh, for this Friday night, Kentucky Pro Football Hall of Fame. Get tickets. Todd asked before the break, Kristen, Teddy Bridgewater, does he have a chance to go down as the greatest football player in Louisville history? Look, Johnny Unitas is pretty tough to, that's, that's going to be a tall <laughs> order, but as far as in recent history, I, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think I think your brother's probably his toughest competition. <laughs> well, I tell you what, <laughs> if if Teddy gets to the Heisman Trophy ceremony, I think that you you could probably put him as the the, the greatest quarterback other than Unitas. Um, now he's had more opportunity than some of the other great quarterbacks. I mean, Teddy's going to have the platform. Yeah. Some of these other guys were great. Redmond, Brian, you know. Guys, even before that, back in the, the 80s, 70s, and 80s, who were, the Louisville's had some good quarterbacks. Uh, Jay Gruden, I mean, around here. Nagel. 
uh, Jeff Brom. They've had a lot of great ones. Not the platform that Teddy's going to have. If he gets to the Heisman ceremony, I think you can say that. Greatest football player, there's been some great ones. There to be honest been. with you. Todd had a good point. They put, Louisville's put some players in professional football. Absolutely. And uh, Tom yeah. Jackson, Doug Buffon, Mark Clay. I mean, well, it'd be tough to be the greatest. I mean, it'd be, yeah, it'd be tough to be the greatest football player unless you go 12 and 0 and you get to the Heisman ceremony. You might, hey, 12 and 0 Heisman ceremony, if national happens, championship. I think, I think you're absolutely. Closed. Yeah, that's that's what it is. You got a better shot than LeBron probably of overtaking Jordan, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, I don't think LeBron's overtaking Jordan. <laughs> any. No. Let's talk some football. Louisville, and Kentucky. It's that time of seat of the year. Actually, we just got done with the NBA Finals. One month, this month of July, nothing's going on. And then we'll get to football. And let's talk about Louisville, Kentucky, their football schedules. Kentucky, where do you see, how many wins? I mean, how many wins do you see them getting? I see at least four. But I think they're going to get an upset. I think, they're, I think it's going to be five. I think it's going to be at least five. And I, I, it could be six. They could get Whoa. to four. Well, let me, just t- let me just t- tell you, it, to win six, to me, I mean, they got four unwinnable games. South Carolina, Alabama, Florida, Georgia. They're not winning. No. They're not beating Vandy at Vandy. Unless that man, I don't know. An upset. I, I think don't that know. could be an upset. They, to get to six, to me, they have to beat both either. Okay, let's see. You to get to six, are they games. have to beat Louisville, Tennessee, and Western to get to six. They have to beat Louisville, Tennessee, and Western. Are they going to do that? I think Western, yes. I think Tennessee, they've got a really good shot. Absolutely. Florida International, come on. Well, I don't know. they're, they're going to be Florida International, Alabama State, and Missouri. They're going to have to be, or they have to oh, win in Mississippi that's, State. That's Louis- yeah. Louisville's going to be Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Louis- they have to beat Louisville to get six, in my opinion. I, don't th- I think they're going to get to four. They're going to be I think they could Tennessee be one of the, Wetner- one of the Mississippi's. Or- Okay, well, then I they think might they could beat one of the Mississippi. Well, they, absolutely. They, they play Mississippi State, but it's on the road. I'll say four. How about Louisville? Losses. Do they have any? I think they're going to have one. And where is it going to be? I have no idea. It's probably going to be the one that you don't expect them to lose. I was going to say. Yeah, that's, that's always what they Louisville's do. M.O. They lose any, at home, too, a lot. I think, I think Kentucky, I think they're going to beat them. No problem. They're going to they're gonna lose, yeah, at home to someone probably midway. I mean, it could be UCF. It could be. It, it could be. I see Rutgers at home it's, on a Thursday on a five-day rest as a trap yeah. type of game. I I, just, to be honest with to you. Me, I just don't see them running the table. I think they've got the talent to. I just, and I, I, I really want Charlie Strong to be the guy yeah. that gets them over that. But Louisville's you know signature what I think has happen. just been this, you know, they, they get so far and they're almost there and then it doesn't happen. I think this year, though, I think they're going to get it's the pressure will build. I think they're going to get to 11 and 0, and they're going to be playing at Cincinnati. It's going to be Rutgers all over again. Yeah, it, Tuberville, he'll do a good job at Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. That game, if it's 11 and 0, and they're at Cincinnati now, Charlie has proven he can go to Rutgers and win and win that big game. But that'll be a tough one. I think they get one loss. Breakout player, both teams. Uh, well, you give me Louisville first. Breakout player. It's got to be Devonte Parker because. And, yeah, he's already, he's already a big player. All the Louisville fans know him. Last year was Teddy's breakout year. As For Louisville to be great, if they, if they get to that undefeated, Devontae Parker has got to be the breakout player to where we're talking Heisman for him next year, where, he is, it, where it's Teddy Bridgewater and Devontae Parker are household names, where that is a go-to combination. That's what, it, that's what the cards have to have. It will, they will, that scary combination. That will be the go-to combination for the Jacksonville Jaguars <laughs> next year. It might be. <laughs> when they both go, probably. I think it's going to be Dominique Brown, even though I do agree. Devontae will soar nationally. He'll just explode, I think, because he's that big time of town. De- Dominique Brown playing running back, didn't play last year. I think he's a bre- – and quick. I, I don't sleep on James Quick. He'll make an impact, the, the freshman. For Kentucky, I think it's Timmons, the receiver from Franklin County. I don't think there's a breakout player on that team right now. I think they're going to play the young guys, but what about you? Well, I think Maxwell Smith and A.J. Legree at receiver have to have a good season. Because they're so thin at receiver, and I think A.J. Legree is a guy that can step up. The other position that I see is cornerback. Somebody's got to step up at quarterback, and I think that Fred Tiller can absolutely step up at that spot. But they've got 
what, three, three guys in you know the there that are cornerbacks, and they just, it's... I don't know anybody on their team. I really don't know the play. I mean, I'm thinking, who are their players? The names don't roll off your tongue at all, and that... Probably why what, I got Fred a new Tyler? Coach. You don't know Fred Tyler? <laughs> I, 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 you know what? I, how did I forget Fred? I, I, you know, <laughs> I, I can't believe I didn't remember his, his stellar play from last season. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll come back taking your calls. 964 2121, the Sunday Sports Bus presented by LivingForLess.org. Sports Buzz will return after these messages from our sponsors. Get everything you need to make that old ride look new again at Smart Shoppers, the region's largest auto body supplier, providing you the full line of professional grade materials at the best prices around. Paint like the pros with a full line of House of Color paint products only at Smart Shoppers, because this is how you roll. The new Praise 1047. When you try to do it, it's a God in me. It's a God in me. Welcome back home to WLOU. Your stellar award winning gospel radio station. Praise Power 1350 WLOU and the new Praise 1047. It's WLOU on FM. Ohio Valley Wrestling, Saturdays at 12 noon, Wednesdays at 9 p.m. on ION 21. All right, don't miss out. $75, the Bluegrass Golf Card. It's a $535 retail value. You've got six great courses. Give us a call, 964-2121-shop21live.com. You can get this great deal. Uh, if you've been thinking about taking lessons like Kristen has, this is your chance to play a lot of golf and uh, uh, have a great summer. So give us a call. We're talking football. We've been talking Louisville and Kentucky. I think Louisville has a loss. Kristen says Kentucky might even get to six wins. I think they're going to get to four. I, I'm, I'm hesitant on that. I think five. They you could, five they could get to six. We'll see how the Mississippi and the Mississippi States are doing. Vandy, let's see if they can do like they did last year or if they, you know, are typical Vandy. I, I just think that when these were, they've got this great recruiting class, but these guys aren't there yet. But, but I want to talk about that recruiting ranking. Right now, with the players they have committed, They've, they're getting a number one ranking because of, you know, partly because they're recruiting some guys with good star caliber to their names. They have stars next to their names in the recruiting rankings. But they're also taking a lot of commitments. You add up all those 19 players with those stars, the cumulative star total is going to be high. But they're doing a great job. I mean, the buzz they're getting is tremendous. What do you think about how they're doing it, number one? How's Kentucky getting these guys? I think, I think when you get a big-name coach like that, similar to when Charlie Strong came to Louisville, there is some buzz with it. And they're an SEC team. It's, everybody wants to play in the SEC. Every, everybody knows that. That's, that's the ultimate goal of every high school football player, is to start in the SEC. And whether that's Kentucky or whether that's Alabama, it's two very different things, but they like to see the, the three letters SEC. And, and you know what? They're, they're going into Ohio that has good football, and they're, they're, it's a good strategy because you go up there and you tell these guys, you want to play in the SEC, you can play, and it's only about you know, 50, 100 miles down the road. You can play in the SEC at Kentucky. You know, maybe they're not going to get recruited by Ohio State because they might that'd probably be their first choice. But other than Ohio State, do they want to go to the Big Ten school or go play in the SEC? You make a great point. And to play in the SEC for guys just north of the, Dix, of the Mason-Dixon line Go to Kentucky. It's a great selling point. You got Stoops' name. That's big in Ohio. It's big across the country. Doing a good job. I just think those guys aren't going to get there for another year, and this year might be a little bit rough for them. Upsets. Where do you think, looking at Louisville's schedule, where's the best chance for them to be upset? I think.
think I think somebody like South Florida or Yukon maybe. Taggart at South Florida now. But I'm with I'm with you on the Rutgers as well. It'll be a bit of South, South Florida's it, always that's a, that's Louisville's a had a rough time with South Florida historically. At South Florida too. Especially at South Florida. They've they've really struggled for whatever reason and it, some of it's been the weather. Uh, yeah, it's, it's We'll throw that out there. Some of it has been the weather, but they've just, you know, they've gotten well, blown you go, out by 60 points. You go down, Florida. I know. You go down there in November and the humidity is like 98%. But these are all Florida degrees. guys. There's a lot of Florida guys yeah. on Louisville's team. It's a great chance for them to show off, but uh, they're at home. They're hanging and out with the bad. They're hanging out but with the family. Bad. It can it can go <laughs> one way or it can go the other. I say at UConn, they lost to UConn last year at home. It's cold. It's cold. They got. They play good defense. You know, they'll play tough, hard-nosed defense. I think that could be a, a, you know, a stumbling block in their path, especially if they're undefeated going into game. Well, that'd be game nine. Especially if there's a fair catch that isn't called. <laughs> it, it happens. <laughs> it, it, for some reason, it happens in, up there. I'd say, where's the best spot for Kentucky to pull the upset? I think absolutely. Like I've said already, one of the Mississippi's Vanderbilt. Um, I just don't see it happening. But with a rivalry game, there's always. If they pull that one, Stoops has arrived. It's. If, it's, if they pull that one, Mike uh, Stoops is king. What do you think Move about over this? Calipari. What do you think about this Western Kentucky game at the beginning of the year? Oh man. I think it's Western, one of the most intriguing games. I think it is too. Of the whole year. I can't wait to watch it. I know that much. Um, man. Petrino and Stoops, and one of them is going to have a loss in their first game in their tenure as head coach. Neither of those guys want at, wants to have a loss in their first game. I can tell you that much. Period. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's – I can't wait. And that I love is. all of these amazing coaches in the Bluegrass State. It's – not only do we have Calipari and Patino, we've got Petrino, we've got Charlie Strong, we've got Mark Stoops. Football, it's is, tough it's in football is important this when you is, have that type of coaches in your state, those type of coaches. That, that's incredible caliber. I mean, I, I couldn't be happier as a fan of sports in this state right now. I think the atmosphere for that game in Nashville. I think they played Nashville a few years ago. They had like 20,000 people. They'll have 70,000 people. Oh, yeah, at least. It'll be crazy. Coach Bobby probably won't sleep oh. till then studying film for <laughs> this one. I mean, you talk about one guy who wants to be you, Kentucky. How do you game plan? You, you have to, you, you know what, you have to watch Florida State's defense. You have to go watch Neil Brown's offense right. at Texas Tech. you got to kind of piece it together. That offense, Kentucky's offense is not going to be fun to play against. No, I if don't think so. If they're play, playing that spread, run, throwing it around, I, that's a very intriguing game. So, uh, you, know, the, you know, they don't play really well the first game, but, man, that's a – you talk about drama. That's about the, as good as you can, wow, close as yeah. you can get to it. And with last year's upset, yeah. looming. Uh, yeah, Let me see Kentucky. I think Kentucky probably would be a fa will be a favorite. It should be. Oh, they should the be. Level. Absolutely, should be a little favorite. But Bobby, you know, Stoops is a new coach. Bobby, his system, he's been running it for years. Mm -hmm. All right, Kristen. Good luck this week. Red carpet. That should be fun. Friday night, you and Angie Fenton over at the Kentucky Pro Football Hall of Fame. We want to have you back soon okay and make sure you listen to Kristen in the mornings on 84 WHS and tune in next week we'll be back at 11 o'clock the Sunday Sports Bus presented by livingforless.org